Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the event tonight for Space Science Club. Uh, we're here tonight with three special guests. Um, we are joined by Nathaniel Bradford, Olivia Smedley and Jamie Williams. They are all currently working at Goon Hilly. It's a wonderful place and I've had a little bit of a glimpse of the inside of it and I'm so excited. But first of all, before I hand over to our guests, I just want to say thank you so much to everybody who nominated us and voted for us as we won this year's, um, what did we win? It was the <laughs> national, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to bring it up on my poster. Oh, we might have to re-edit this, this is awful. <laughs> It was the National Branch of the Year. Thank you at UK Sets, and it was, yeah, amazing. So we're not even a year old and we have an award, so it's amazing. So, you know, considering none of us know what we're doing, excellent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand over to our first speaker tonight, uh, Nathaniel. So Nathaniel, the floor is yours. <clears throat> well, good evening, everyone. It, is a, it generally is a great honour for uh, to be here and, and for Tracy to um ask us to do this um shall i start by sharing my screen and that might yes, be the please. good idea so and then if you could just tell me what you can see yeah so do you see yes. Chris space screen we do fantastic okay the first thing i want to, to do is say a massive thank you to tracy for the organizing this event and um it amuses me that Actually, this comes out of a chat we had regarding AstroFest 2022. <laughs> and um, so, um, and here we are, you know, completely unexpected. So, uh, my particular section of the talk is going to be in two sections, okay? Um, I'll present an overview of the, co uh, the company that Jamie Olivia and I work for Goon Hilly. Uh, and then in the second half of my section of the talk, I'll briefly broaden the focus for to Cornwall and the rest of the UK in regards to the space industry. Uh, and then give you a flavour of what's out there and um, give you some pointers to other information that you can access. Um, and so uh, hopefully it'll be about 15 minute talk, 15, 20 at the absolute most. Okay. Oh, uh, a caveat. My internet may drop out at certain points. <laughs> I'm at home. Um, it, it takes seconds for me to re-establish the connection. So uh, hopefully, hopefully it won't happen, uh, but uh, just bear me with me if that does indeed happen. Okay, so. OK, what's OK? Right, I'd like to start off first by giving you all context as to where Gun Hilly is in relation to where you are in the rest of the UK. Um, we're down in the southwest corner of the country, wonderful Cornwall. <laughs> I have to say that because it is truly wonderful. Um, and we're actually situated. Um, Oh, can you see the satellite image? Yeah, top right hand corner, there's a satellite image. I, actually, this is from the International Space Station. So this is an ISS photo uh, of uh, Southern Cornwall. And we're situated on what's called the Lizard Peninsula. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'd just like to say any sort of aerial shot, I, I think pretty much every aerial shot I show uh, are thanks to Jamie and his drone. So <laughs> thank you very much, Jamie, for that. Um, so we're based in an area that's of uh, a triple SI area, a, a site of special scientific interest, uh, mainly because of the micro, the unique microclimate that um, this part of Cornwall has. It's a very, very flat horizon in this area and also uh, Gurnihili is actually sits on in, incredibly dense bedrock. Uh, it was chosen partly because of the flat horizon, because of the, in, the incredibly dense flat, um, bedrock, which supports these huge antennas that we've got. Um, and also because it's actually really quite far from civilization, it, 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 as it were, uh, regards to uh, radio interference. There's very little radio interference um, in this part of Cornwall. 
As well as the site in Cornwall, we do also actually have another site, which is in Hampshire in Farnborough. Um, and it's situated in this building. And I believe it's in the bottom left hand corner as you look at this photo. Uh, so that site um, has some of our um, scientists in and it's a great location because it's very near to London. So um, colleagues from Europe and people who are in the southeast, especially in some of the industries in the southeast to do with satellite communicate, uh, satellite, building satellites. Um, uh, can eat, it's a, a great place for them all to convene when we get back to, you know, uh, better days. So Goonhilly itself, um, the, the site itself was acquired by our CEO, Ian Jones, in 2014. Um, Ian inherited a, pre, a, a pr previous telecommunications uh, station. So there were various satellite antennas on the site whose job was to communicate with satellites in geostationary orbit and uh, low earth orbit. Geostationary orbit are tend to be um, satellites that deal with uh, um, communicating and transmitting weather data and um, TV uh, channels, that kind of thing. And they're at approximately 35,000 miles from the earth. Um, and so Ian inherited some telecommunications satellite antenna and also three very large antennas that were at that point were no longer in operational use. That was 2014, rolled forward seven years to where we are now. And a lot's been achieved by Ian and the team at Goonhilly. It is honestly, it's a truly fantastic place to work. Um, we've now got lots of new facilities. We've got an amazing data center, uh, which offers machine learning and AI processing capabilities. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a couple of slides time. We've also got brand new conference facilities. We've got two mission operation centers, which allow us to communicate and operate the, the antenna, um, all of the antennas across the site from two central locations. And these will run 24 seven. Uh, we've got an ever expanding portfolio of antennas. We no longer just, we no longer just deal with telecommunication satellites. Uh, we no dealing with and talking, communicating with CubeSats, Earth observation satellites, deep space satellites and deep space spacecraft, uh, which is something that um, I believe Olivia will talk about. We've got, as I said, three very large antennas uh, and these two of them are currently in the process of being repurposed for use in radio astronomy in deep space. I'll talk about the third one soon. We've also got some alpacas and some goats on site. And shortly we'll be getting some cows uh, to manage the site. So uh, uh, interesting times ahead in that respect. Okay, so we've got three large antennas. Um, Gunhili One has got a, a diameter of 26 meters. There's an intent that we will get that connected to the Drodro Bank E Merlin interferometer network. Um, when we get to that stage, that will effectively double, just just slightly over, uh, double the uh, the diameter of the uh, the um, E Merlin network. Um, are you all familiar with uh, interferometers and the E Merlin, Tracy? Do you think most people are familiar? You um, could you could talk about it if you want. I'm just wondering how much time I've got and how much, you know. We'll stop you um, when people leave. Then you could okay. stop, but carry well, on. <laughs> okay. In a very, okay. Imagine you've got a meter ruler and then you put a dish, whether it be two teles optical telescopes or two radio telescopes, one on each each end. Okay, and then they are both looking at the same object in the sky, and then you connect this the 
the two telescopes together electronically with fancy wizardry electronics. Um, you effectively make a telescope that's the equivalent uh, length of that meter ruler from two smaller tissues. So if you then put a number of those antenna together, uh, you increase the, the quality of the signal, you increase the resolution of the signal. And so effectively using smaller antenna or smaller teles optical telescopes, you can synthesize, if you like, the equivalent of a much larger telescope. Is that clear enough? Do you think that'll do for the moment? <laughs> okay, and so it's called an interferometer. There's optical interferometers. Uh, there's one at uh, in um, I think it's Chile, the uh, ESO, the European Southern Observatory. have got one using for optical telescopes, um, and you can do the same with radio dishes. And this is what happens with the Jodrell Bank E Merlin. Um, and so we we will be able to extend, if you like, the the um, the virtual sort of diameter of that of that virtual telescope, if you like, uh, eventually. So that's the idea with a um, inter, an interferometer. Uh, and on this slide, that's the picture on the bottom left. Then we've got a uh, Gunhilly three, which is a thirty meter dish that's being converted. Uh, so that it can be used as a radio telescope uh, and that will can also be um, used as a deep space comms scope and one of the interesting things about that particular scope um, antenna at the moment is the the receiver feed can be chilled down to almost absolute zero i think it's about 8 8k i think is uh, so around that kind of range and it, and, and it uses uh, cryostat um, and it's um, it's a, an amazing piece of kit and Jamie I do believe I'll talk briefly about cryostats because I understand he's designing one so I'll leave Jamie to talk about that finally but certainly not on that and that's the central image the middle image in this slide on the right hand side is uh, Greenhilly 6 Yay! It's an absolutely fantastic dish. It is. I mean, they're all wonderful dishes, but Gunnelly Six at the moment is my favourite. Definitely, it's what I see outside my office window for starters. Um, and Gunnelly Six actually recently listened in on the Mars Perseverance, uh, and that was so amazing. I mean, seriously, you know, it, it listened in. It, it, it also listened in. It, it could. Uh, I, I uh, received. Uh, it listened in on the Hope, the UAE Hope, uh, getting going to Mars, and also uh, China's. Uh, Chen one one something like that. Um, so it's it's you know it's 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 proving proof of concept that it it is a it is a deep space antenna you know, um, and that's got a thirty two meter diameter dish, um, and um, Olivia will have more to say about that because she works on that. Uh, the great thing about the deep space communications antennas is deep space means anything at the moon or beyond effectively okay so ge uh, geostationary satellites are around 35,000 kilometers away about 22,000 miles uh, the moon's around 384,000 kilometers away uh, 238,000 miles um, and so basically uh, deep space is from there onwards towards mars and then into the deep solar system and, and in fact um, if you know, if Gunhilly 3 is being used as a radio telescope, then strictly speaking, that is seriously deep space. I mean, it's almost potentially the edge of the universe. I don't know whether it can pick up the CMS, but uh, right, I digress. So when I say these antenna are big, I mean they are big. You know, this picture shows um, Gunhilly 6. Uh, when it was in the early days of being um, repurposed as a deep space antenna. And these are two of our engineers inside the dish doing some work. And I just thought it would give you a bit of appreciation of just how big these antennae are. You know, this is serious. These are serious pieces of engineering, uh, uh, high precision engineering as well, because they have to be able to track objects, you know, that, that, that are sort of um, traveling not only quite fast across the sky through in low Earth orbit, uh, but very accurately 
because of the the uh, the, the wave beam, um, you know, the diameter of that, the wave beam. So th these are amazing pieces of kit. And this is the dish that listened in to Perseverance as it hurtled towards the atmosphere of Mars last month. So, OK. So. As I said earlier, we know we're more than just a telecommunications satellite station. We do more than just receive and transmit to telecommunity satellites. We've diversified and we know we've, we've got capabilities to communicate in deep space. We can talk to the ISS. Um, there's lots of satellite constellations being put up into space. We've got the capabilities to uh, communicate with those. Uh, CubeSats are a, a, a big new industry um, and also Earth observations because of climate change. Um, that's becoming a very important industry. And so we've got capabilities to talk and communicate and receive data from all of these different types of um, satellite spacecraft. And one of the things that we did just over the last year and a half is we built a data center. Uh, one of the reasons we, we built the data center was because if you can um, connect your antenna, if the distance between your antenna and the, the area where the data is processed is as short as possible, that gives you certain gains uh, regards to the types of information that you process and the data center also allows us to offer extra services to customers. And one of the things we can offer is artificial intelligence and machine learning processing capabilities. And as a proof of concept of this, uh, just recently, Hartford University um, used our facilities in order to um, peel away clouds from um, satellite imagery of the ground. And so this enables people to um, look it within agriculture uh, um, at the land and to look at uh, uh, weather erosion, things like this. So as well as all the hardware that we've got, as well as the nuts and bolts and the data processing and collecting of, pro of data. Um, we're also passionate about STEM or STEAM, as we like to say these days. It's not only um, science, technology, engineering, and math that's important, it's also art, it's also uh, imagination, visual visualization, getting out there, talking to people, getting people passionate about the uh, the industry. I mean, people are passionate about space anyway. You know, you talk to anyone about space, and most people are sort of, you know, their eyes light up. Um, so to actually work in that industry for me is just, it's just the the, the dream dream job. I, it just it is just phenomenal. Um, um, so part of our work, obviously, is doing things like this: outreach, getting people interested in the in the industry. Um, people who might be working in other areas of um, or other um, science or engineering areas who want to get into space, for example. Um, one thing we do every year is we we run a professional training course, which is called the Space Mission Operations Course or SMARC. Um, and that um, gives professionals uh, a deep understanding of what's required and what's involved in working within, uh, specifically within the space industry, the challenges of um, that they, you know, can face and and the ways in which uh, their skills can be used. We also run a year twelve summer school, uh, which sort of ties in with STEM within the national curriculum. Uh, that also proves very popular. And it's also a great opportunity for um, students to, from the rest of the country, to actually uh, come and have a great week in Cornwall during the summer. We normally want it in July. I I don't think it's 
obviously virtually everything has grown to a halt because of covid etc i don't think we're winning it this year but um if we do we'll announce details on the website so it's, it'll pay to just keep looking at the website for that particular information we also encourage school visits onto the site uh, we do site tours um, online talks like this <laughs> and um, and in 2019 for the first time ever uh, we had a music festival at Goonhilly which was truly truly just fun bonkers absolutely bonkers and the reason we uh, ran that music festival was, be was because um, one of the th there's a direct tie-in with the uh, Apollo 11 landing on the moon in July 69 uh, to Goonhilly because our Goonhilly one antenna was actually the antenna that was used to transmit the um, the footage of the guys you know walking on the moon etc through to Europe uh, and through to beyond Europe and so uh, if it hadn't been for Goonhilly one you know uh, in, in Europe we'd have been either waiting listening to the radio or waiting for of the news in the newspapers uh so so there was a direct link to that event and and so we held a um music festival oh, and it was it was it was absolutely bonkers now obviously uh, uh, in um apollo 17 1972 uh it that it, that 50th year is coming up next year whether or not we can do anything for that i don't know once again um watch this space excuse the pun uh, on our website uh, it would be fantastic if we could but um, we'll have to see so that's pretty much um, what we do at Goon Hilly uh, it's a it's very brief summary um, th there's so much going on it, it, all I can do is really direct it to our, towards our website and what I intend to do at the end of this talk is save this presentation as a PDF, which I then will um, give to Tracy. So, and I understand Tracy, you're going to pop it somewhere that people can get access to. So all of the, there's, there are URLs on here that will be live links, uh, which you'll be able to click on to. Um, so that's the first part of my uh, talk. Very briefly, the second part is just to change the focus from Goonhilly to Cornwall and the rest of the UK. Um, so, I mean, at Guni, like, like a lot of companies, we work very closely with the universities and with the wider space industry, uh, you know, both in the UK here and across the world. And you'll see from this graphic that I've put up that Cornwall has an incredibly vibrant space sector. Um, I'm not going to go through all of the different companies, but what I will direct your attention to is on the right hand side, the 747 with the rocket um, below it. Uh, um, within the next two years, Richard Branson is going to bring, be bringing a 747 to uh, Cornwall, to Newquay, uh, as part of uh, uh, an organisation called Spaceport Cornwall. And this 747 will be involved in um, horizontal horizontal launches. So that's where you take a rocket, you connect it to the underside of the wing of an airplane. The airplane flies to altitude, drops the rocket, the rocket fires its engine, and then takes the payload into orbit. They they did a test of the technology just a few months ago, and it went fantastically well. Um, the government have just published all of the health and safety legislation regards to space in the UK and spaceports. So the spaceports now have got all of the legislation in place. So really things can start ramping up now. So um, so I just wanted to do it. Um, that's a really exciting thing that's going to happen. There's lots of other stuff, exciting stuff happening in Cornwall. There are lots of companies, not just in Cornwall, but throughout the whole of the UK. And it can get a bit bewildering as to how to find information about all these different companies and so the government have created a website which will allow you to go and do research you might have a certain area of industry that you're passionate about 
that you want to get into, well, you can go and do a search on, you know, certain specific keywords within certain companies. It'll, it'll bring up all the different companies that um, match with that keyword. And then you can start to drill down and st start to find whether there are any companies in your area of the country or where, whether you need to move, et cetera. And um, it's at the, U uh, the government's own um, website, which is called UK Space Agency. Uh, it's actually buried quite deeply. <laughs> it's not, it's, it's the government's department is business, energy and industrial strategy. And, uh, and, and, and buried within there is the UK Space Agency. So it's here that you'll find all the latest news relating to UK space. And as I say, where you can search UK wide for companies involved in some way within the space industry. Um, at the When I looked this morning, uh, there's, there's actually 900 plus companies listed currently. Um, and the, but the search process is fairly interactive and easy because there's there are maps that you can click onto. And um, once again, um, when I um, publish this as a PDF and give it to Tracy, uh, the, the the hyperlinks that you see will be active, so that'll be the quickest way for you to get to it. But this is just I've just got two slides to give an example of um, the the interface. Uh, on the left hand side, you see uh, there are these uh, circles which you can click on and then they open up the an appropriate window. Uh, I've just shown uh, the UK on the right hand section of the slide full of dots and each color relates to a different area. Um, and then if you want to know whether there's um, any information specific to your region, well, there's also a different area that you can click on. So in other words, it's something you need to sort of dig into play around with. It's a useful source of information. One of the things that the UK Space Agency has just done is they've actually published a survey. Um, they, they put out a general call over the last year asking people to um, log on and fill out the information. And it's actually, there's some fascinating information in there. I'm not going to go through it. <laughs> I'll let you do that yourself if you're really interested. Um, but there's, there's generally some interesting information. There's also, um, it highlights where there are shortages within certain um, sectors regards to the skills. So that's an interesting area to look at because you may well have a skill set that isn't immediately obviously compatible with a certain sort of part of the industry. Uh, but you might be surprised, um, you know, I'm a graphic designer by trade, I, you know, I work in the space industry. I, you know, <laughs> what can I say? Um, so anyway, so that's certainly worth uh, looking at if you're interested and want to dig a bit more deeply. Finally, in my part of the talk, I'll just say there's actually a trade association for the uh, space industry. And on the right hand side of the slide, you'll see there's some actually really big names uh, in there. Um, can you see my mouse? It's my most visible. There's some really big names in this in here. Um, so that's also worth checking out. So uh, that comes to the end of my part of the presentation. Uh, so I think I'll now attempt to pass back to Tracy. So Thank you, I... Nathaniel. Oh, am I back? Are you back? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that was really good. Thank you so much. And your enthusiasm for Goon Hilly is amazing. And when we were doing our prep yesterday, honestly, I was exactly this. I was like, oh, no way. Show me this slide again. Oh, my God, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> OK, so while we've got... Um, uh, well, so basically, yeah, thank you, Nathaniel. That's brilliant. So any questions aimed at Nathaniel, don't worry, we'll come to at the end. So we're going to pass over to Jamie who you'll see from his background is now just a black oh, window. That's a shame. Unfortunately, it's gone, dark. it's gone dark. But I can tell you when we logged in earlier today, it was amazing. I'm, I'm doing you now, Nathaniel. I'm doing you. You've got to stop it. But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was brilliant. So no, never gonna... stop being ne never <laughs> never stop being enthusiastic. No, don't. So. Never. Okay, so Jamie is the current intern, uh, mechanical engineer, deep space mission operations. So, Jamie, over to you to tell us about your cool job. Hi, thank you, Tracy, and thank you, uh, Nathaniel. Um, can you see my slides? Yes. 
Right. Well, good evening, everyone. I, um, as Tracy said, I'm an intern at Goon Hilly Earth Station. I'm still at university. I'm at Plymouth University. I'm in my final year. So in a couple months time, I would have graduated. Um, I joined Goon Hilly in July 2019, and I loved it so much that I haven't left since, even though I probably should have left my internship about eight months ago, <laughs> but I'm still here. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about what my background is and how I came to find that this company was was here. I, I had no idea prior to probably 2018 that this company was here and I've lived in Cornwall my entire life um, and I was overjoyed when I found that there was a space company in Cornwall and that I'm now a part of it. So my background, my education background, I went to Sir James Smith's, that's a, a school in North Cornwall um, and I've studied a couple courses at Truro College. Uh, originally, I wanted to do forensic science, but I thought probably not best. I, I enjoyed the course a lot, loved the people uh, that taught me and I worked with, but I fancied uh, a change in direction. And it was that point I found that there was space companies in the UK. Because prior to that, I had no idea that there was anything in, in the UK. I thought it was only NASA and ESA. And I found that there was um, Airbus Defence and Space up in Stevenage. So I originally wanted to um, go work up there and have a um, apprenticeship up there, but I thought it's probably a bit too far away, and I like where I live too much. Um, yeah, I like where I live. So currently, I'm at Plymouth University studying mechanical design and manufacturing. So why did I choose university? I thought it was the natural progression past college. I'd already stayed on and done an extra course at college. Um, so I thought it was about time to, for me to move on and, and find something what I enjoyed, something that I could get qualifications, help progress my career and do something I was a bit more passionate in um, and also meeting new people. Um, and that's been, it's been a great experience with that so far, but COVID's kind of got in the way of this year. So it's not been so great this year. Um, so how I got my internship. So in my university course, I encourage you to do an internship uh, between your second and third year. Um, so I went to an event called Advanced Engineering up in Birmingham. Uh, and I went around the event all day looking for companies, asking every single one, do you have an internship? Will you hire me? And it took almost at the end of the day, I, I saw a small booth or a small area near exhibition centre dedicated to Cornwall. So I went all the way up to Birmingham just to find companies that were literally down the road from me the closest being nine miles away. And I spoke to a lovely lady called Gail Eustro who put me in touch with, with um, the people at Goon Hilly Earth Station. So I encourage anyone who's looking for different careers, when events are happening again, go to some events and, uh, and network and meet some people. Uh, it really paid off for me. So what I do at Goon Hilly, uh, working on the world's first commercial deep space antenna, pretty cool. Um, I participated in international conferences and visits. We've had, um, we had an event called IOAG within the first few weeks of me being here, uh, where we had about 12 space agencies around the world converge to Goon Hilly and, and have a three day conference about uh, satellite communications. And for being in my first month or two, I thought that was pretty amazing being a part of that. And then we've had some great visits from uh, the Dara project where um, uh, people in radio astronomy in Africa uh, came to Goon Hilly and, and showed off their projects, which was another really great event. Um, mainly what I've been doing because my background with uni and college has been mechanical design. I've uh, been doing lots of computer aided designs. So I've designed some structural components for Goon Hilly 6. I would point to it behind me, but it is pitch black. Um, but I've designed or kind of, as some people say, copied the old design and we rebuilt it. Uh, the azimuth cabin, which sits, uh, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but I'm circling this large square cabin at the, uh, in the middle of the antenna. Uh, that's been rebuilt and I did the uh, design and drawings for that and sent it to companies for manufacturing. Uh, Uh, other projects I've done at Goon Hilly. Um, so top left is the Azimuth cabin, which um, I designed and, and created drawings for. 
Uh, inside that is the feed horn and feed uh, system for the antenna. So all the signals converge down that large column, that beam waveguide, and converge into a large cone that then goes through lots of waveguide and, and down into the base building for, um, for processing. I've also designed, well, designed and did renders for the mission uh, operations room, uh, 3D printed antennas for display, photogrammetry, Then a bit more recently, done STEM events, and when COVID first hit, we um, used our 3D printers at Gunhe to make face shields for um, NHS workers, um, anyone in the care sector. And I think in the end, I printed, with help from people in the company and, and people in my community, about a thousand of them, and sent them off to uh, around the country uh, in the first month or two of a pandemic. So what I currently do, although I'm still at university, I'm, I'm battling still doing my degree and doing modules. I've been doing that all week this week until very late, getting assignments in before my Easter break. But I'm still active at Goonhilly and designing the called receiver that Nathaniel mentioned for Goonhilly 6. So on the left is what I'm currently designing. A, it's about the size of a shoebox, small cryostat receiver. It's got a low noise amplifier inside. And it's um, a vacuum vessel with two temperature zones. So I can cryogenically cool the low noise amplifier to about 10 degrees Kelvin um, and reduce the background noise and allow for a much cleaner signal. Uh, the one in the middle is what we already have currently on Goonhilly 3. That's been installed for about a couple of years now, uh, designed at uh, Oxford University. So I'm being tasked for taking that a uh, cylindrical uh, cryostat and making a rectangular one and optimizing it for Goonhilly 6. And on the picture on the right is where it's going to go. So that's the feed system inside the azimuth cabin. So I'll be designing the uh, X-band uh, receive for deep space communications. So I normally give this uh, presentation to schools as well. So I've included any advice that might be applicable to people. Um, going to trade shows, I definitely found that was really useful and I wouldn't be where I am today without um, going up to Birmingham and, and meeting with people at Cornwall Aerospace, putting me in touch with people at Goonhilly. Um, I've definitely found a lot of merit in doing activities outside of uni, trying to boost up my, um, especially my LinkedIn page and, and other credentials. Uh, I was actually on a call just prior to this uh, doing some other um, other activities. Um, I find I try and go the extra mile. Um, yeah, I find that quite useful. Uh, being myself, uh, being enthusiastic, a bit like Nathaniel, I'm definitely enthusiastic about this place. I mean, I'm still here at half seven at night when I should be at home. <laughs> um, and doing interesting projects. I've, when I was at college and university, I tried to pick things that were interesting and academically challenging and even if it didn't pan out I still learned a lot in the process and that's that's the end of my talk thank you very much for listening thank you Jamie that was so good and uh yeah um but thank you for being here at half seven to look good hilly and I'm really sorry that you guys couldn't see the view that we saw earlier it was <laughs> yeah we'll have to get we'll get Nathaniel to uh send us some photos and we'll put those up as well so uh thank you for that Jamie so uh, we're going to pass over to Olivia now and Olivia has a degree in physics and astrophysics and she's currently a postgraduate uh, student with the OU studying part time towards um, MSc in space science and technology. So Olivia over to you. OK thanks Tracy. Just share my screen. OK, can you see that? OK, yeah, perfect. Brilliant. OK, yep. Yeah. so um, I'm Olivia Smedley. I'm a graduate space scientist working here at Goonhilly. Um, I've been here about a year and a half now and the Open University has really helped me um, to actually it be in this role right now. So I'm going to talk a bit about my journey to this role. Um, 
so I guess my journey is quite an unconventional one in some sense. Um, after my A-levels, I went straight to university to study physics with astrophysics at Bristol University. Um, I've always had a passion for space ever since I was younger, kind of from being a little girl dragging the telescope out into the garden and looking at the stars and planets and just being fascinated by that. So I followed that through to degree level. Um, after I graduated, I actually pursued um, another interest I had, which was surfing and actually um, competed in bodyboarding and represented England in the World Bodyboard Games. So for a couple of years, I was kind of involved with that. And um, yeah, I, I think after I graduated from my degree, I I didn't really, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do and I wasn't really sure on what roles were even available in the space industry. I didn't really know what kind of careers or roles I could do. Um, and eventually I kind of decided that I'd like to train to be a teacher and kind of share my passion for space and science as a whole. Um, so I trained to be a secondary school teacher, which I did for several years and I really enjoyed, you know, some really rewarding moments throughout that, that career. And um, yeah, so it was brilliant, but I realised eventually that it wasn't quite for me um, and I wanted to do something more really involved in the space industry and really kind of challenge myself academically. So I decided to make a career change, um, which wasn't the easiest thing to do. Um, I wasn't quite too sure where to start, to be honest. Um, but the first thing I came across was a space careers afternoon that was advertised at Goon Hilly Earth Station, which was for students. Um, and this was in 2018 and I was a bit put off initially. I thought, oh, for students, I'm not a student anymore. You know, I'm a bit old for that, maybe. <laughs> um, but I contacted and gave it a go. I thought, oh, maybe I'll be able to be allowed to go. And I was and I went along to it. Uh, it was a brilliant event. Um, and during that event, I met our CEO, Ian Jones. And I picked up my top tip here from from him during one of his presentations, which was if you want a career in the space industry to basically get involved. So I took that on board and really did everything I could to to reach that goal for myself, basically. So um, I started kind of looking for volunteering roles. I did some voluntary work with Cornwall Sea to Stars. Um, doing lots of research online, reading books and magazines even to keep up to date with what was going on in the space industry. Um, as Jamie mentioned, creating a LinkedIn page was useful for kind of seeing people that were working in the space industry and looking at their backgrounds and what they'd done to get to where they were to learn a bit more. And I guess during that time is when I came across the Open University Space Science and Technology uh, Masters, um, which to be honest, when I saw it, I couldn't believe it. I It was just, it looked like the perfect course and just what I wanted to do. And I couldn't believe it was something I'd be able to do remotely without having to, to move location, which I didn't want to do. So um, it, brilliant and I started studying in January 2019 on that one with the first module S818 Space Science which is a brilliant course um, some of you may be on that one um, but I really enjoyed it um, and I'm actually still working towards my master's and um, due to complete in this September uh, I'm currently on my final project module. Um, I've chosen to study an Earth observation related project looking at mapping land cover using satellite imagery. Um, 
So yeah, going back a little bit again, um, after I started my OU course, not long after I saw the Space Missions Operations course advertised at, at Goonhilly, which was in June of the same year. So I went along to, to that one. It was a five day intense kind of crash course, um, but I learned so much and got to obviously tour around the site and I was fascinated by everything that was happening there. There's so many amazing projects um, that I wanted to be involved with and I guess the rest is history after that and that um, not long after that I was offered a role as a graduate space scientist and started later that year so I guess um, I, I was pretty pleased and surprised that I'd managed to make the career change kind of so so quickly because I only started the the course in the January and then I was working in space by that that September so it was um, yeah I, was, I guess using the top tip of getting involved is how I made that that happen so on to Goon Hilly then so I started in September 2019 and I have to say for me it was a very steep learning curve to start with um, Everyone, it seemed like everyone was talking in a different language to start with, lots of acronyms being used that um, I was trying to, my hardest to remember. And But what was brilliant was that I could tell there was so much to learn and so many exciting things happening. So um, it was, it's, you know, it's continued to be a great experience. And so far I've had the opportunity to work on some amazing projects with some amazing people and yeah it's just I'm so grateful for this opportunity that, that I've got and to be in the job I am and recently I joined the <coughs> deep space communications operations team which is working on the Goon Hilly 6 upgrade which I'll talk about in a moment. So just I thought I'd show you some pictures of kind of my first year. Um, I spent that time kind of working site wide and really got kind of immersed in everything that was happening across site. So I could really see what was going on, which was brilliant. So it could be from kind of installing new services. So there I was on the left installing a new new antenna. Um, it could be, it could have been aligning dishes, so it was kind of practical work, getting really hands on with everything, which was great. Um, giving tours as well to visiting groups, uh, such as the Dara project that um, Jamie mentioned earlier. Um, I got the amazing opportunity to go to Washington just before COVID. Um, well, it kind of got cut short due to COVID, but anyway, um, yeah, it's a Satellite 2020 conference, which was a, an amazing experience to get to network with people from across kind of the global space community. And this is just a picture of a typical view from kind of daily rounds. Um, that I do go around checking the health, well, kind of a health check on the antennas and making sure everything's functioning as expected. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an amazing location to work at as well. So Goon Hilly 6 is my main project now. Um, we're nearing completion on this. And um, right now we're underco undergoing testing to support Mars Express, um, which is one of the older ESA missions um, that's been in orbit around Mars since around 2003, I believe. Um, so we've been, I've been working with the team to work towards that on some of the monitoring and control system and yeah, getting involved with all aspects, to be honest. Uh, some more pictures. Uh, the bottom picture here is me sitting inside the dish, which was <laughs> a brilliant experience to actually go into the dish when it's pointing up to Zenith. Um, it's just huge and you 
the pictures just don't kind of do it justice but it's really cool to be inside um uh, just the other day um we did some hand cranking on the antenna we were we, we were trained how to manually move the antenna by turning the wheel there in that picture um and i was amazed by the fact that i could just turn this little wheel and the whole this whole 32 meter dish was moving um yeah that was a cool experience um and then the top two pictures are from the night of the mars perseverance landing so we tracked it and observed the signal um the whole way to, through to the landing pretty much and um there's a spectrum analyzer signal of it there um yeah i mean that was just brilliant to be a part of uh, really enjoyable so uh, yeah so bringing it back to the open university then uh, it's yeah been a huge help for me and a great support um to be doing that whilst working uh, full time which obviously has its challenges but um is also it also has benefits too so these are just some of the things that sprang to mind of direct links to the to the master's course um things like just the language being exposed to kind of the language used in the space industry i think ha you know i had quite a, a large break between my undergraduate and uh, masters and going into working in the space industry so just being exposed to that was helpful. Um, link budgets are studied in S818 Space Science, um, which have been directly relevant, celestial mechanics top topics using SDK software uh, have already helped me. Um, and even the uh, rover project that was that was done as part of part of that module as well just really helpful it you know it's kind of how we work almost on a day-to-day -day basis so it was great to have that experience prior to starting at Goonhilly so it, it you know it's it's been brilliant um, yeah thanks very much for listening everyone I hope that um, it would be will be useful for you and uh, yeah good luck with your your own journeys <laughs> oh thank you for that olivia that was lovely and your photos are brilliant yes that, your good plan. Um, that was brilliant so thank you to the three of you for your each little bit if every bit was so interesting and there's questions already lots of questions so um if we'll stop the recording